Hi, I'm Dan Augusto for GearWire.com, and you're watching Engineering 101. This is our series on convolution reverb. In the first two parts, uh, we were sampling uh, spring reverb, an electronic spring reverb, and in this section, what we'll actually be uh, taking an impulse response of is the room that we are in, so that we'll be able to take, you know, the recordings that we have and using the convolution plug and make them sound like they're in this room. Uh, now, there's two different ways that one can accomplish this. Uh, we could use a noise burst, um, kind of like what we use in the first one where we use electronic white noise. A lot of people um, in this day and age take impulse responses by using a starter pistol in a space or uh, popping a balloon. That way you don't have to have a speaker. Um, but this particular room, as I, I don't know if you can hear it, is kind of loud. The air conditioning was just turned on a few days ago, uh, so we got a HVAC right behind me, um, and so it's kind of a loud space, and that's sort of um, the, the method of getting IRs using a noise burst or a sard pistol or something like that is not really all that effective uh, because the noise burst becomes, or the noise floor becomes part of the impulse response and that just kind of screws up and, and doesn't really give you an accurate uh, feel for how it actually sounds in a space and it also sounds unprofessional. So what we're going to be doing is using a sign sweep in this uh, space. And to do this, uh, we're using a uh, Mackie HR824. It's on the other side of the room, kind of just pointing off uh, in no particular, no particular direction. And we're going to use a few, uh, couple different microphones and a couple different ways. Um, first off, we're going to use uh, this interview mic. It's the ATM3A, uh, I believe. Yeah. The ATM31A. This is a cardioid microphone. We're going to have one pointing in the direction where the speaker is at, and the other pointing away from uh, away from there, just kind of at the wall to go, sort of get two different sounds out of this mic. Okay, so on our first track, we have the sign sweep uh, that we made in our last video, and it's signified up here on the mixer. We have that routed out of our interface so that it's going only to the HR824. On the second track, uh, you can see we have signal. And that is our ATM31A. Uh, we have that turned up pretty high because we really want to capture as much of that signal as possible. And that's signified right here on the timeline. This is the track that we'll be recording to. So let's go ahead and hit record. And we're done. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the mic towards the wall, and we'll get a different sound out of that one. Okay, so now inside of my interface, I'm going to turn off phantom power, turn my mic preamp all the way down, and take out the mic, and we're going to take out our other mic. And what this is, this is an Earthworks measurement measurement mic, the M30. It's a very flat frequency mic, and it's omnidirectional, which means it pick up everything around it. Um, so, and so basically, we'll get, hopefully, a very, very true uh, impulse response uh, with this mic. Okay, let's record our Earthworks M30. On this one, I think we're going to see little different characteristics uh, with our metering. It's going to stay higher longer, uh, yielding a brighter uh, IR. Okay, so I've gone ahead and exported the reverberant sign sweeps, and I've named them according to which mic and what direction they were in, so on and so forth. So let's listen to these files. We'll just listen to the lower frequencies, because the higher ones get a little hard to listen to. Here is the Audio-Technica, the ATM31, facing towards the source. Here is Away. So we're getting more reflection on that. And here's the Earthworks, and this should be slightly more even, but uh, also should be a little bit more reverberant. So now we're ready to go into Space Designer and deconvolve these. Now I'm going to do this real quick because there's a more detailed demonstration in the last video. You hit Deconvolution in Space Designer. You choose your wave file. This is the towards file. Use your test file, the sign sweep. And then you can just save it as the same name if you like. 
The bouncing beach ball of death lets you know that it's working. Okay, so now I've deconvolved all three of our samples. Uh, they're ready to be loaded into Space Designer as they are uh, and be used as reverb, but there's one extra step that you can take that I didn't cover in the last video just to make sure everything's sounding right. So what I've done is I brought all three of the SDR files into our arrange window. These are actually AIFFs. And as you can see, they look like they're really long files, like they're just as long as the sign suites. But if we actually listen to them, that's all we hear. So what we're going to do is actually, using our ears, find the end of the impulses and delete the rest of the file. Now, of course, we don't want to do just a hard delete at the end of our sample. That could create a digital click, and that could mess up our impulse response. So what we're going to do is do a real quick fade at the end and then delete the rest of it, giving us a nice, short, clean sample. So here we see our trimmed up samples with the fades at the end. And let's give them a quick listen. Listen to that one one more time. So those three sound like they'll make good IRs. And since I did all the editing destructively, they're ready to go. So I've opened an instantiation of Ultrabeat, which is the drum machine within Logic. Much like Session Drummer 2 that we looked at in a previous video, uh, Ultrabeat has preset MIDI files that you can play back inside of the plugin uh, without even messing with the transport of your DAW. So I'm going to start that up and uh, we'll listen to first the direct sound once again, and then we're just going to take a quick listen to our Earthworks mic. The other ones I'll make available for download, but we'll just check out the Earthworks right now. Okay, so here's our direct signal, completely dry. I'm going to turn that down and turn up our reverb. So it does actually sound like it's in a room, and I would have to say it's pretty close to this room. But what I'm going to do is mix together our direct and reverb signal, because in a real-world uh, situation, like if the drum set was right over here, I would hear a mixture of direct and reverberant sounds. So bring up the direct. Maybe a little more reverb. And that sounds pretty convincing. So thanks for checking out this video. We'll have these uh, samples and other ones available for download in the near future. And make sure to check out our next video, which will show us some other uses, uh, not necessarily reverb uses, uh, th that we can sample using IRs.